For more on this, we have Joel Rubin in the studio here with us. He's the Democratic former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. Joel, great to have you back. My gosh, it was just Thanks, three Hillary. weeks yes. ago that we were sitting here also doing the same thing, contemplating how this government shutdown was going to end. What exactly, besides the temporary protection status for the DACA recipients, do Democrats not agree with in this GOP proposal? So the proposal that the president put forward on Saturday is different from what they'll be voting on on Thursday. Uh, Leader McConnell in the Senate is proposing that all the money be, rele uh, be released to build the wall and that there be uh, somewhat of a, an agreement on temporary protected status workers to keep them in the country and uh, the dreamers to allow them to stay. But uh, the president also included more harsh measures about asylum seekers. And it's creating some dissonance right now with the Democrats and making them very skeptical, which means that it likely won't survive the House, even if, if it does get through the Senate. So we're, we're in a strange place. We have two different chambers of Congress right now. They're not on, in sync. They're not on the same page. And then the president's proposal from Saturday is also a bit different from what we're going to see legislatively on Thursday. In a typical negotiation, Joel, you see a counter offer. Democrats have flatly rejected this, and the measure that they're proposing on Thursday is simply just to fund and reopen the government. Yeah. Why aren't they putting something ambitious on the table back to break this deadlock? So right now the House feels that it has the political winds at its back. In poll after poll, President Trump still gets the overwhelming majority of the blame for this. Democrats can't overplay their hand, though, if they're seen as reluctant to really make a deal, as, as you're, you're getting at. So the House bills from the Democrats are likely going to include more border security money targeted towards specific programs, not towards a wall. And they're going to pass those bills alongside funding the government in full. And they'll kick those to the Senate. That's sort of the idea of the negotiation. The core talking point for Democrats is open the government and then let's negotiate. And the president says no opening the government until we get a deal. And that's really the sticking point right now. You mentioned just there that the Dems feel that in the House they have the political winds at their back, which goes back to the fact that they don't, they're not feeling the pressure either that they yes. have to reopen the government. It's all being put on the president right now, but surely there's some culpability on the Democratic side of things. Yeah, ultimately every member of Congress has to face their voters and has to explain why they're supporting this continued shutdown. And you do hear rumors of, or murmurs of uh, more conservative members or members who, who were just elected in the House from purple districts or districts that were won by President Trump is getting a little bit nervous. And so I think that the sense inside the Democratic caucus in the House will be one of we can push this as far as we can, but let's not overplay our hand either. Uh, if that happens, then we can see some negotiation. But Democrats are right now still in a position where President Trump not only said he would take the blame for the shutdown, but he also backed away from what was passed in December unanimously in the Senate to keep the government funded. So his messaging still is, is in a, a, a more uh, negative position. All right, Joel Rubin, great to have you back. Appreciate you being with us. Thanks.